Hello, my name is Gabby Coletta. Thanks for joining me out here in Cochise Stronghold, Arizona. Today's practice is inspired by one of my favorite quotes from the Bhagavad Gita, and it goes, Yoga is the journey of the self, through the self, to the self. And today we will be working towards a pose called Compass Pose, kind of in the effort to help us really start to define our own true north. Oftentimes we live in a world that tells us how we should be, that imposes expectations, and certain belief systems get indoctrinated into us. And a lot of the practice of yoga is about undoing, unlearning, and kind of peeling away the layers that are clouding our truest and most authentic self. So that is the invitation as we move. You might want a strap if you have tight hamstrings, and this will be a great um, assistance. And grab any other props you might need. There will be an optional arm balance figure eight pose as well. So meet me in Sukhasana when you're ready. Go ahead and settle into a comfortable seat, easy cross-legged seat, or something else that serves your body. Let's place the palms face down for a sense of grounding. If you want, you can seal index finger and thumb together in this mudra, this gesture of knowledge, of wisdom, and a deeper wisdom that's innate. I invite you to close your eyes or to soften your gaze. Just really starting to tune out the external world and let the internal world become alive. So maybe you do so by just noticing what's present in the here and now. How does the body feel? Are there any areas that are stiff, tight, tense? heavy, or spacious, open, light, expansive? And can you add an element of curiosity? So without judgment, without expecting the body to be a certain way, invite the body to arrive just as it is. And then notice how you feel. Any emotions stirring, moving through, or the texture of your thoughts, what's coming in, the mindscape, and seeing if you can just let it enter and leave into observation and out. And then wherever you are, take a big breath in, really full breath. Fill up the belly, the ribs, the lungs, and sigh it out the mouth. Two more arrival breaths. Inhale, big breath in. Just noticing how the breath is filling the body. And let it go. And once more, the inhale, inviting all parts of yourself to show up in practice. And the exhale, releasing what is not yours. And then gently seal the lips and continue to deepen the breath in and out through the nose. If you're familiar with ujjayi breath, this victorious breath, you might invite this into your practice in and out through the nose with a gentle constriction in the back of the throat, almost like the sound of the ocean. Perhaps you even imagine the waves, the sound of the ocean, just washing away any extraneous or frenetic energy, any inherent, inherited beliefs that are not yours. And really tune into the breath. Invite the breath to get longer. And start to smooth it out. can bring one hand to your heart, one hand over that hand if it feels right and authentic to you. Or you can bring your hands to prayer, whatever will help you harness your focus to set an intention. And then go ahead and gently set an intention, bowing head towards heart. 
can be one word, a mantra, something to send your life force, your prana towards. And let this intention seed in your cells, your heart, your whole body. A whole body, yes. And slowly lift the head. You can keep the eyes closed or flutter them open. Release the hands down. If you were cross-legged, go ahead and switch the cross of the legs. Drop your right ear to the right shoulder. Melt the chin towards the chest and take it over to the opposite shoulder. A few neck rolls here, just side to side, ironing out any tension, any holding, any tightness. Let the breath be slow. Slowly bring your head to center. Ground the fingertips down on the earth and let the spine get long. The heart lift as the shoulders soften down the back. Next inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Big breath in. Palms press and hands come to heart center. Interlace the hands, press the palms forward, round the back and pull the shoulder blades away. And then send the palms to the sky, grow tall. Twist to your right. Left hand to right knee, right hand anchors behind you. And a few breaths here. Every inhale, spine gets long. And every exhale, start to twist, softening the shoulders down the back. You can gaze over your right shoulder. If that's a little tight for your neck, then just gaze in the direction of your heart. Let the hip creases relax, the sit bones sink down. And then inhale back to center, arms to the sky, and take it the opposite way, twisting other direction. Every inhale, imagine length in the spine, space between each vertebrae. And every exhale, twist, slightly toning the belly in. Keep the back of the neck long. One more breath. Inhale back to center, reach to the sky. And then lower your right hand down to the side. Crescent up and over towards the right. Get a side body stretch as you press the left sit bone down. And roll your heart to the sky. Take another big inhale here to stretch the side body. And then come through center, arms to the sky. Switch sides, left fingertips down. Right fingers extend over to the side. Spiral your heart to the sky. Take another big breath, fanning open the top ribs as the sit bone sinks down. And then take this on your own stride. Arms to the sky. Your exhales take you side to side. I'm just inviting opening in the side body, letting the lungs really expand. And once more each side. Slowly come back to center. Release both hands down and all the way to the knees and start large torso circles in one direction, just getting into the sit bones, the hip creases, and circling the torso. You can close the eyes here if that helps bring a sense of internal awareness. Closing off one of our senses that brings us outward. And just letting yourself really feel what's happening in this body, this moment, Next time you're upright, take the circles the other way. See if you can open all sides of the rib cage, the front of the heart, side of the heart, back of heart. One more big circle. Slowly come to center, reach the arms to the sky, big breath. Palms meet, hands come through center, and we'll make our way into table, all fours. Really spread the hands. Stack the shoulders over the wrists, the hips over the knees. Next, inhale, draw your heart forward, lift the chin, the gaze. Even feel the collarbones stretch away from each other. Exhale to press the earth away, round the back, drop the head heavy. And we'll move a few times here like this. The inhale opens the front of the heart, even stretches the throat. The exhale presses the earth away to round. Then you can stay with cow and cat. You can tune into your own intuitive knowing of how you want to move your body today. So maybe that's cow and cat. Maybe that's C curving the spine, wagging the tail, barreling the torso. We'll be here for about four breaths. So take your time. Just start to relish in the movements. 
perhaps even imagine kind of wiggling into a part of the body that hasn't felt sensation yet. Another breath here. And then come back to your neutral table. Send the right arm up to the sky, big breath to open, and then exhale to thread the needle, right arm under left, rest the right shoulder, the right cheek. We have a few options here. You can keep pressing the left hand into the earth and walk the left fingertips forward. You can stay as you are, or if you want to start getting into the hamstring and the hip, then you can send the left leg back, tucking the toes. Maybe you stay here. Or kick the left leg out to the side, plant the sole of the foot onto the earth, opening up the hip. As your left hip spirals down, you're still opening the left shoulder back. So there's opposing energy, still twisting, but pressing the left hip down. One more breath. Left hand frames the face. Whatever leg variation you took, just bring your, right, your left knee to meet the right. Press into the earth, send left, right arm to sky, unravel and release. Other side, left arm sweeps up, big wingspan here, and then thread left arm under right. Rest the left shoulder, the left cheek on the earth. You might even lean into the left side a little bit, letting the traction of the mat help deepen your twist. Your choice for the fingers, you can walk the fingers forward, and then your choice for the right leg. You can extend the leg back, tucking the toes, little hamstring stretch or even take the leg out to the side, getting into the inseam of the leg. Take another breath here. Right hand frames the face. Guide your right knee to meet the left. If you took a leg variation, press into the earth and send left arm back to sky. Release the hand down. Rinse it out, one round of cow and cat. Inhale, heart draws forward. Exhale, press the earth away. Come back to your table, tuck the toes, draw the belly in and send your hips up and back for down dog, first one of practice. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Take the next few breaths here to move in any way that serves your body. You might settle into stillness or pedal the feet, tick tock the heels to the side. If your shoulders feel tight, take your hands a little wider than shoulder width apart. Space between the pointer and middle finger facing forward and really press into the L of the hands. Press your hands down and forward so your heart moves towards the back of the mat. And see if you can get the side body to get longer. Take a full breath here. A complete exhale. Keep your feet either hips width or a little wider than hips width. Continue to ground into your right hand and left hand comes to the opposite ankle, shin, calf, leg, whatever you can grab. Start to spiral the gaze under your right armpit for down dog twist. Really sink the weight into both feet. One more breath as you press your right hand down and forward. And release your left hand down. We'll switch sides. Right hand comes to the opposite ankle, shin, calf. Start to spiral the gaze under the left armpit and try to keep even weight in both feet. Release your right hand down. And then inhale to rise up on the tippy toes, stick the booty up high in the air, and then exhale to swivel toes and knees to the right and sink the hips towards the heels. Kind of a little dancy dog here. Inhale back to center, booty up high, and then swivel toes and knees to the left, sink the hips towards the heels. Just kind of getting a little side body stretch once more each time, each side. Toes and knees to the right, sink down, press the earth away with your hands. Come back to center, take it the other way. Come back to center. Separate the feet as wide as the mat, point the toes out, the heels in. Start to sway side to side, just getting into the hamstrings, the back of the legs. You might walk your hands one handprint closer to your feet. And then walk your hands all the way to the back. Bend the knees, knees out, find garland pose or yogi squat. Press the elbows into the knees, lift the heart. 
We'll invite some dynamic movement into this. So on your next breath, plant the hands, lift the hips, parallel the feet in this kind of wider fold, like outer hips width fold. And then point the toes out, sink the hips down, lift the heart. You can keep your fingers on the earth. We'll do this four more times, or you can bring your hands to heart. Ready, hands to ground, lift the hips, fold inward, feet are parallel. And then exhale, sink the hips down, toes out, lift the heart, soften the shoulders down the back. Last three, straighten the legs, bow inward, and toes out, sink the hips. Last two. Toes out, hips low, heart lifted. Final one. And hips low. Go ahead and lift the hips and toe heel your feet towards each other so they're hips width apart. Walk your hands forward into your down dog. Take a big inhale here and exhale, ripple forward into plank. You can always lower your knees down. Exhale, hips up and back, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Twice more, ripple forward. Hips up and back. Once more, ripple forward, pause, really widen across the collarbones, back of neck long, gaze at the front of the mat, and lower knees, chest, chin to the earth, slide onto the belly. Inhale, cobra, loop the shoulders back, lift the heart, keep pressing the tops of the feet down. Exhale, release. Two more times, inhale, lift the heart, lengthen the tailbone towards the feet, and release. Once more, inhale, heart lifts, collarbones broad, and release. Press through all fours, rounding the back through cap, take it into a child's pose, knees wide, hips towards heels, arms long in front of you. Take a full breath here, really let the skin on the back stretch. A full exhale. Know that as we start to build heat in our practice, you can always return to child's pose, to find your breath, to find your focus, to find yourself. Inhale, rise to table. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, down dog. Shift your gaze to the front of the mat and walk your feet all the way to the front. Find your half lift, long spine. Exhale to fold. Twice more, half lift, weight is in the fronts of the feet, knit the low ribs in and up. Exhale, fold. Once more, half lift. Peel the shoulders away from ears. Exhale, fold. Soft bend in the knees. Roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time. See if you can really move slowly just to feel present with every subtle T of the body. As you lift the heart, roll the shoulders towards the ears and then back, turn the palms forward. Rotating sun salutations, moving in the direction of a mandala, a circle. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky, urdhva hastasana, grow tall. Exhale, fold forward all the way down. Find your half lift, long spine, navel in. Plant the hands, step your right foot back, right foot to the earth. Knee down, untuck the toes, anjane asana, reach the arms forward and up. Tone the low belly in as the heart lifts. Exhale, hands to the earth. Tuck your back toes and walk towards the right, the long edge of the mat, all the way to face the back of the mat. Drop your left knee down. Untuck the toes. Reach the arms forward and up. Palms are facing each other. Heart lifts. Exhale, hands to the earth. Step back into plank pose. Modified chaturanga or full chaturanga, your version. Lower knees, chest, chin, or halfway down. Inhale, low cobra or up dog. Exhale, we make our way to down dog, either pressing through plank or all fours. Left leg rises, three-legged dog, hips are square to the mat. And then step the foot between the hands, lower your back knee down. Untuck the back toes, anjane here, sweep the arms forward and up, scissor the inner thighs together. Exhale, hands down. Tuck your right toes, walk towards the right, finishing the circle, towards the long edge of the mat, all the way to face the front. Left knee drops, untuck toes, anjaneyasana facing the front of your mat. Lift the heart as you spiral the outer right hip down. Exhale, hands to the earth. Tuck your back toes, look forward, and then step forward to the top of your mat, half lift. Exhale, fold. 
Reverse swan dive, press to the feet, rise tall to stand, palms meet. Hands to heart center, samasutihi. Lead with our left leg this time. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms up. Exhale, fold, soft bend in the knees as you hinge, heart leads you down. Find your half lift, weight in the fronts of the feet, shoulders away from ears. Exhale, plant hands, step left foot back. Left foot, lower the knee, untuck the toes. Anjane here, reach the arms forward and up, lift the heart, draw the belly in. Release the hands down, tuck your back toes and walk towards the left, opposite direction, towards the long edge, all the way to face the back. Lower your right knee, untuck the toes, Anjaneyasana here. Release the hands. Step back into plank pose. Lower down, halfway, or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. A little bend in the elbows if you're an up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right leg rises, really lift the heel up, inseam of the leg rises, and then step the foot between the hands, lower your back knee. Untuck the back toes and reach the arms up. Heart lift, shoulders soften down the back. Release the hands down, tuck your left toes, finish the mandala towards the left, all the way to face the front. Drop your back knee, untuck the toes, Anjane here. Lift the heart and release the hands down. Look forward to the top of your mat and then step forward. Find your half lift. Exhale to fold. Reverse swan dive, press through the feet, rise tall, palms meet. Hands to heart center. Pause here for a moment. Keep lifting your heart into your thumbs. Take a moment to notice that even as heat builds, even as we move in circular motions, your feet are still rooted, your breath is still moving. And see if you can just tune into yourself. Sensations in the body the thoughts, the breath. Separate your feet, hips width apart if they aren't already. Inhale, reach the arms up, grab onto your left wrist and crescent up and over to the right, little side body stretch. Take it the other way, opposite wrist up and over. Come back to center, fold forward all the way down. And then find your half lift, Left hand comes in front of the face or maybe in a brick. Send your right arm to the sky for a twist. Deep bend into your left knee as you straighten your right leg. Try to find this wingspan peeling the shoulders away from the ears. Breathe here. Release right hand down. We'll take it the other side. Right hand to earth or brick. Deep bend into the right knee as you straighten left leg. Reach left arm up. Pull the shoulders away from ears. Make sure both knees are facing forward. One more breath and release. Half lift, plant the hands, step back, rinse it through vinyasa or skip it. You can always just hold down dog or take a child's pose and really relish in your breath. What will be true to yourself? Take three breaths and down dog. See if you can expand the breath in all sides of the rib cage. Really let the breath go, emptying out. One more breath. Send your right leg high to the sky. Then open up the hip, stack right hip on top of left. You can bend and extend the leg. Maybe do some hip circles but try to keep your shoulders square to the earth. Then reach the right leg long and back, square off the hips, inhale here. Exhale, knee to nose, and as lightly as possible, plant the foot between the hands. Spiral your back heel down and walk your hands to the top left corner of the mat for down dog lunge. Pull your outer right hip back. Take a big inhale here and exhale, melting your heart towards the earth. So we're getting a hip opener here. One more breath. 
and then slowly walk the hands along the long edge of the mat. Pivot your back toes out for skandasana on the back leg. Left knee in the same direction as the toes. And I invite you to just wash it side to side into the hips, your own movement. We'll all meet with our back leg bent, our back leg. Take your hands to heart center, inhale here. Exhale, rise up, warrior two, and pause. As you settle into your warrior two, front shin bone is straight up and down, and try to level out the hips. So the right hip crease is drawing to the sky, arms are really reaching long. Breathe here. Keep pressing your right knee towards the pinky toe edge and find your stability. Flip your front palm up, reverse warrior up and back. Stay for your exhale to sink a little lower. Take another inhale. Extended side angle, right forearm to the inner thigh, the earth. Left arm can come straight up or towards the front. But just make sure you're not caving your heart in. You're really reaching that left arm back. And then we'll dance the warrior twice here, right arm up and back. Extended side angle. Really stretching the side body. Once more each time. And this time, reverse warrior. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down and pause. Drop your back knee to the earth, untuck the back toes. Reach your arms forward and up, and then take your hands to the heart. You might lift up out of the hips a little bit here. Inhale, and then exhale, twist to your right. Hook the left elbow around the right knee and press the elbow into the knee. Modification can be to ground the left hand on the inside of the front foot. So we're really twisting, lengthening the spine, and leveraging the elbow into the knee to help deepen the twist. One more breath. Reach the arms up to the sky, big inhale. Exhale, both hands down to frame the front foot. You might take bricks here, half splits. Take your hips back, flex the front legs towards you, front foot towards you. Inhale, long spine. And then exhale to fold towards your extended leg. We'll be here for a few breaths, so see if each breath can be an invitation to deepen into presence, to deepen into sensation, and the pose. Keep spiraling your outer right hip down, and even flex the pinky toe edge of your front foot. Every inhale, long spine, inhale here. Every exhale, heart melts towards toes, slight tuck of the chin, so the back of neck is long. One. Take one more breath here. Inhale to lift the torso, bend into your front leg, tuck your back toes, and then lift the knee up and pivot towards the long edge of the mat, facing the long edge of the mat. Toe heel your feet in slightly, point the toes out, heels in, and sink the hips low. Pause first, grab onto your ankles and press your elbows into the knees while you press the knees back into the elbows. So there's kind of this pressure going in both ways, elbows into knees, knees into elbows, your back is long. Just really feel the four corners of the feet on the earth, the inner arch is activated, the toes soft, getting into the hips here. Then walk your hands up to the thighs for goddess twist. Inhale, lift the torso, the heart. Drop your right shoulder, look over left. Inhale, back to center, opposite side. We'll take it a few times, side to side. Once more, each side. Come back to center, sink the hips low, take the arms up and out to the side. One more breath. Straighten the legs, parallel the feet, start out, inhale. Exhale, fold, wide-legged fold here. Hands come underneath the shoulders just for a breath to lengthen the spine. And then exhale to fold deeply into your wide-legged fold. You can walk the hands in line with the feet like they're sharing a tightrope. Crown of the head descends down. Shoulders pull away from ears. Notice if you're locking out the knees and keep a little micro bend in your knees as you draw the thighs up. 
and rock the weight to the fronts of the feet. Take one more breath. Walk the hands forward so they're under the shoulders. Find your half lift. Walk your hands all the way to the front of the mat and step your front foot back. Rinse through a vinyasa, skip it. We will meet in either a child's pose or a down dog. Choose the pose that is a resting pose for you. When you arrive in your resting pose, just take a moment to notice. Notice the parts of the body sinking to the earth. Notice how the breath is pulsing in and out. Yoga is the journey of the self, through the self, to the self. So what are you noticing about yourself in this practice, your thoughts, your emotions, your mind, your body, how is it moving? What's here? What's not here? Take one more breath wherever you are. Let it completely go. If you're in child's pose, meet us in down dog when you're ready, journey onto our other side, we go together. The left leg rises high to the sky, three-legged dog. And then open up the hip. You can bend and extend the leg. Maybe some ankle circles, maybe the same thing you did on the other side, or something different. The self is made of many parts, and they're not all functioning the same way, so we have to honor each part's needs. Square off your hips, take an inhale here, and then step the left foot forward, spiral your back heel down, down dog lunge. Walk your hands to the top right corner of the mat. Keep pulling your outer left hip back. And make sure that knee is directly over the ankle. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, heart melts to earth. Back of neck long. One more breath. And then start to walk the hands along the long edge of the mat, pivoting the back toes out, skandasana. We'll take it side to side. If you have any pain around the knee, keep a little micro bend in the knee or any pain in the hamstring. And then take it side to side. And you can keep the hands on the earth or you can find your own expression, flying the arms, hands to heart. Where we'll meet is our back leg bent, our right leg about a breath or so. Take an inhale, your back leg skandasana, and your exhale carries you up to warrior two. Pause. Take a moment to settle in. Front heel in line with the back heel or the arch. Even the hips leveling out. Reach the arms long, soften the shoulders down the back, flip the front palm up, reverse warrior, side bend. Really expanding left ribs. Exhale, extended side angle, left forearm to the inner thigh or the earth. Right arm forward or straight up. But really think about extending the side body here, rolling the heart to the sky. And then we'll dance it back and forth, dancing warrior. And steady with your breath. Reverse warrior, everybody, left arm up and back. Cartwheel the hands down and pause. Drop your back knee to the earth, untuck the back toes. Anjane Asana, hands to heart center. Inhale, long spine and exhale, we twist to the left this time. Right elbow hooks around the left knee, press the elbow into the knee. So you start to roll the heart up, pull the left shoulder back. One more breath. Unravel, arms sweep up. Your exhale takes the hands to either side of your front foot. Hips shift back, half splits. Flex the left toes towards you, right thigh bone is straight up and down. And then every inhale, spine gets long. Every exhale, heart melts towards toes. 
See if you can keep the length in the spine and imagine the pelvis, if it were a bowl, would be pouring forward. So the tailbone is tilting back, pelvis pouring forward. Soften the jaw, the tongue, the muscles in the face. Take one more breath here. On your next exhale, bend into the front leg, tuck your back toes, lift the back knee and pivot to face the long edge of the mat. Heels in, toes out, sink the hips low and rise straight up to your goddess pose. Arms out to the side. Take a moment to just make sure the knees are stacked over the ankles and the tailbone is lengthening down. And then drop your left forearm to the inner thigh, reach your right arm up and over to crescent, and just side body stretch, side to side here. Couple breaths. Imagine the steadiness in the whole bottom body, and then this expansion and expression in the upper body, grounded in ourselves. From here, straighten the legs, turn the toes in, start out, inhale, exhale, fold into your wide-legged fold. You have a couple options here. You can keep the same variation, hands in line with the feet, or grab peace fingers to big toes, long spine, and then fold. We'll hold our fold for a few breaths and then have some optional add-ons. As you fold inward, see if every breath your ribs can melt to thighs. Now you're welcome to stay here. If you know you want an inversion and you have a safe inversion in your practice, please enter it and play. Otherwise, I'm going to invite us into a twist just to really open the side body some more, preparing us for compass. So bring your right hand in front of the face and send your left arm to the sky. Now you can keep in this variation, this first variation, and try to even out the weight in the feet and level the hips off. You can stay here, big benefits in this open arm twist, or carve the, right, the left hand underneath to the opposite ankle, shin or calf, and walk your right fingertips forward. So kind of like our down dog twist, except this time in a wide-legged fold. And you'll really use the leverage of your bottom hand to kind of help spiral the gaze under your armpit. If you want to go even deeper, you'll walk your right fingers to the opposite leg, so opposite hands on opposite legs. Take another breath here. If you're in variation two or three of the twists, you'll just slowly unravel. Left arm sweeps back up. Everybody release the top arm down. If you're inverted, you might still stay there. Maybe come down, your choice. But we got one more side here. So opposite arm down, opposite arm up. Twisting to the other way. Notice if you're rocking your weight back and if you are, bring it forward to the balls of the feet. Take another inhale with the right fingers reaching up. Stay or thread top arm under to the opposite ankle. Walk your left fingers forward this time and then start to spiral the gaze underneath your left armpit. Stay or walk the fingers to the opposite foot. We'll take our twist in a few breaths. Slowly unravel whatever variation you've taken, right arm to the sky and everybody release the hand down. If you're inverted, make your way down. We're all going to lift, half lift up here and walk our hands to the front of the mat. Step the front foot back and rinse through a vinyasa. You can always skip it. Where we will meet is a child's pose for everyone.
take a couple breaths to arrive, no rush. Once you arrive in child's pose, you're just going to slowly roll yourself up. I invite you to offset your hips to the side and swing your legs forward. And then take your left chin in, your right leg over for double pigeon. So as we get into our double pigeon, our shins are parallel, our feet are flexed to protect the ankle from sickling. So we keep the stability in our bottom body. If this is a little too intense for you, you can plant your hands behind you and just plant the lower foot down like a seated figure four, okay? We'll be in our hip opener for a little while with options to build on. And I recommend if you know you wanna work into compass pose and you have tight hamstrings to go ahead and just make sure you have your strap nearby. Here we are, Agni Stambhasana, double pigeon. Ground your fingertips on the earth. See if both sit bones can remain rooted. And every inhale, the spine gets long. Stay here or gently bow inward. And you might just find your depth, a couple breaths. Slowly lift the torso if you did take a bow. And then you're going to go ahead and grab on right hand to the outside of the right foot. Take it out to the side like a half happy baby and just kind of open up the hip on your own. You can take your bottom leg in slightly here if that feels more comfortable. I'm going to try to keep the torso lifted. So you can keep playing with this happy baby. You can hold the foot and kind of just invite a little movement, some mobility, being mindful, being gentle, but just seeing how this feels to create movement. Now you're welcome to stay there or take the knee in towards the armpit, feet on the hands on the outside of the foot, and bring it into heron pose, drawing the leg up straight, softening the shoulders down the back, lifting the heart. So these are all variations. You could still be in your hip opener, which has tremendous grounding benefits. It also has big benefits for release, for detox. And in that journey of self, it has benefits for letting go of what is not yours. You might stay here, or we might start to work into our compass pose, bending the right leg again. And then you're going to put the right leg on top of your shoulder like a little backpack. And if you're moving into the full expression without the strap, you'll take your left hand to the outside of the foot and then start to extend the leg straight as you press your right shoulder into the leg and spiral your heart to the sky. If you're using the strap, you'll just loop it around the foot and this gives you some length so that you can use the strap to do the same thing. And it's okay if you have to keep the leg bent to protect your hamstrings, especially if that flexibility isn't there. This could be an expression too. But we're really working on the twisting, the opening of the lungs, the side body, and opening up of the hips in compass pose. And again, you could stay right here. If you want, last option, is to work into the arm balance. You might come out of compass pose, you might have skipped it all together. You're still gonna wanna place that right leg as high on the shoulder as possible like a little backpack. Plant your hands down and bottom leg crosses on top. Hands to the earth, you're gonna rock forward, create chaturanga in the arms and kick the legs out to the side. And if you can't quite hold it, you can also just sink down to the earth and you'll still kinda get a sensation of what it feels like. Figure eight. 
or eight angle, excuse me. Ashta Vakrasana, Vakrasana. So take a couple breaths, whether you're playing and whatever you are, but eventually you're gonna make your way back to your center. And then we'll move together into our other side. So just switch your double pigeon, whichever leg wasn't on the bottom is now on the bottom. For me, my right leg is on the bottom. Flex your feet. Because if we have our ankle sickling, there might be too much flexibility in the ankles and that can jeopardize our own stability. Ground the fingers down, lift the heart, breathe here. And just notice. Notice how the side feels, if there's any differences. Stay here or fold inward. If you're folded, slowly come on up. Again, you could be right where you are, or you can grab onto the outside of the left foot, take it into a half happy baby. And just notice the side might feel a little different. You can also grab onto the foot and just invite complete mobility in the hip, the knee, again, being gentle, mindful, just noticing what feels okay, what doesn't, we all have different ranges of motion. And then if you're gonna move into your compass pose, you will place your left leg as high on the shoulder as possible, like a backpack. Grab your right hand to the outside of the left foot and start to kick hand into foot. Now, sometimes it helps to have the bottom ankle closer in. And you're pressing your left hand down to help get, get leverage, and then you'll start to kick and stretch. And as you might notice, this side is a very different experience for me because I am working an injury. So it's okay that my leg is bent. I could either keep it bent or I could kind of work with the strap again, using this as a great modification to help me gain a little more leverage. And I really want to think about keeping my torso lifted and my side body opening. Okay. So taking it to your ability your expression this is a really deep pose compass pose really helping us find our our direction and if you want to stay there keep practicing that hip opening and hamstring opening go for it otherwise final little balance challenge but still high on the on the arm take your hands down to chaturanga and cross the bottom ankle on top and then you're gonna kind of rock forward, create chaturanga in the arms, and kick the legs out to the side. Take about three more breaths to play in what serves you. And then notice the narrative. Notice the narrative that comes up. Notice if there's attachment, expectation. And then notice what's really yours. And while we're here for a few more breaths playing, just notice. Notice what's coming up. Notice if there's attachment or um, kind of self-talk. And then see what's yours and see what's not yours. What can you let go? There's no one way that yoga should look like. And it's a very individual and personal practice to your highest self. When you're finished, just go ahead and find yourself in a seat. 
Take a moment, eyes closed or soft gaze, just to notice as the body settles into stillness. And slowly open the eyes. Scooch to the center of the mat if you're not there already and extend the legs long. Lower yourself all the way onto your back and hug both knees in. Keep hugging your right knee in as you extend your left leg long. And then find a supine twist. Knee crosses over and right arm extends out. And take a big rinse water breath here. See if you can give all your effort to gravity. And slowly come back to center. Hug the left knee in, extend the right leg long. Scoot your hips an inch to the left as you drop the knee across the body for a twist. Left arm extends out to a half T, palm faces up. And take a big rinse water breath. Full exhale. Once more. And let it go. And slowly come back to center. Hug both knees in. Ask yourself if there's any last thing you need in your practice that will feel authentic to you. And I'll leave you in your final resting pose, Shavasana, to savor it as long as you wish. Just be mindful to take yourself out when you're ready. Hug the knees into the chest, give yourself a squeeze, and release everything into Shavasana, allowing yourself to rest.